Before we dive into how you're going to bulk, the first thing we need to do is to address your current state. That means we'll be looking at your current muscle mass, your height and how much muscle you're likely to gain. We'll also be looking at the metabolic demands of your body, which will tell us how many calories you'll burn in a given day. That's going to be very important for building muscle, as we'll see in a moment. So for now, we're going to start by assessing you in your current condition. We'll find some numbers to put your name to, and while it might seem a little random, stick with it. In the videos that follow, these numbers are going to serve as your guide. Knowing yourself is crucial when it comes to gaining muscle. So first, let's calculate your current body fat percentage and lean mass. Finding out how much you weigh is very easy. All you need to do is step on a set of scales and you'll be given a precise number denoting your weight. But that on its own is not a particularly useful metric because it doesn't actually tell you anything about your muscle. Anyone can be big, they just had to eat huge amounts of cake. But you're not trying to get fat, you're trying to get jacked, and that means you're interested in adding muscle, and it's why you need to know just how much of your current mass is muscle already. So to do this, you're going to step yourself onto a set of scales and get your weight in pounds. Okay, done that? Right. I'm 176.4 pounds at 5 foot 8, by the way, so I'll be playing along with you. Now you need to work out your body fat percentage. This is the percentage of that weight that is accounted for by subcutaneous fat, and that's the fat underneath your skin. And finding this number is fortunately very easy. All you need to do is to measure the thickness of your skin, which will include that layer of fat. To do this, you need to grab a pinch of skin from the side of the tricep. So this is the spot midway between your shoulder and elbow on the outside of your arm around from the bicep. And then you want to use this chart to get your current body fat percentage. So you want to get your skin fold thickness in millimetres and that is going to give you a rough idea of your body fat percentage and you'll notice here from this chart that the percentages are different for men and women. And this is a rough estimate, of course, but you can also get an idea by looking at photos of people at different body fat percentages. If you can see abs but aren't covered in ripped veins, then you're probably between 13 and 10% body fat. If you can see all the striations and the veins, then you're sub 10%. Find a number that you think is a fair estimate and then subtract that percentage from your current body weight to find out what you would weigh if all of your body fat were to be removed. If you weighed 100 pounds and your body fat percentage were 10%, then you would have a lean mass of 90 pounds. Now, for me, that number is 158.76 pounds because I had 10% body fat, well, approximately. Now it's actually possible to get some more very interesting information from these numbers, which is your FFMI, that is your fat-free mass index, which is like a body mass index, but a lot more accurate because it differentiates between muscle and fat. And what's more, there is an upper limit to what your FFMI can be naturally without using steroids or other performance-enhancing drugs. And this is good because it lets us see just how much stronger we can get. To work out your FFMI, all you need to do is use this equation. FFMI equals your LBM in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. So convert your lean body mass to kilograms, then divide it by the square of your height in meters. So when I do this with my numbers, I get a score of 23.065. The maximum it is generally agreed that you can score here is about 25. Any higher than that, and people will, perhaps rightly, suspect that you may be using steroids. This was the finding according to one study that surveyed a lot of natural athletes to see where they would peak. This is your genetic limit, and beyond that, you'll only really be able to add fat. It's not a perfect score though, and some individuals generally have been able to break through and go even further beyond, you know, Dragon Ball Z quote, even without steroids. But as a rule, this is how far you can expect to go. 
So if I have an FFMI of 23.065 and the maximum is 25, that means I have achieved 92.26% of my genetic potential. Work out how close you are to achieving yours and you can start to picture just how much bigger you could potentially get. Know this though, the closer you start to get to your genetic limit, the harder it will become to add on more muscle. This is why experienced athletes can often be quite jealous of beginners who still experience noob gains. But it's good news if you're currently very skinny because it means you'll be able to really start piling on the pounds quickly with the right regimen. With that out of the way, we can finally work out your AMR and BMR. So what exactly are these numbers? Well, your BMR is your basal metabolic rate. This is just how much energy, in calories, your body needs in order to live. This is assuming you're not moving at all, you know, you're just lying there. Your body will still need to use up energy simply to maintain your systems, you know, to help you blink, breathe, digest and pump blood around your body. Your AMR is this number plus the number of calories you're burning through movement and exercise. When you combine those two things, what you're left with is the total energy demand of your body on an average day. This in turn tells you just how much you need to eat if you want to avoid burning fat and how much you need to eat if you want to encourage burning fat. Because if you were trying to lose weight, then you would need to remain on a calorie deficit. That would mean you'd be eating fewer calories than you burn throughout the day. As a result, your body will be forced to burn fat in order to fuel your various movements or just to keep your heart beating. But you're not trying to lose weight. In fact, you're trying to gain weight, albeit a certain kind, and that means you need to maintain a caloric surplus where you consume more calories in the day than you use up. This in turn will mean that your body then has extra calories to spare and it will most likely store those calories as fat around the body or use them to build muscle or provide you with fuel to move around with. You don't want to go too far into surplus or you'll end up looking huge and blobby while also breaking out in bouts of acne. Instead, you need to go just far enough into surplus and that's why you need to get scientific and you need to calculate precisely how many calories you need and how many you're eating. There are numerous equations for calculating BMR, but the one we're going to use is based on your lean body mass. Now, this is very important because muscle is more metabolically active than fat. If you're very heavy due to a lot of muscle, then you'll burn more calories simply to maintain and operate all that muscle mass. So the equation looks like this. BMR equals 370 plus brackets 9.79757519 multiplied by LBM in pounds. So when I take my 162.288 and put that in, I get a BMR of 1960. This means if I just lay there all day, I would lose weight unless I ate at least 1,960 calories, or kcal. Now let's add in activity. And this is going to be something of a rough estimate, but this following list should help. 1.2, if you're sedentary, that means you get little or no exercise. 1.375, if you're slightly active, in other words, you exercise one to three times a week. 1.55 if you're moderately active or you exercise or work out about average. 1.725 if you're very active, in other words you train hard for six or seven days a week or you do a job that requires a lot of time on your feet. And 1.9 if you're highly active, you know, you're a physical laborer or a professional athlete. If you feel you're somewhere in the middle, then guesstimate the number that's somewhere in the middle. Unfortunately, there's never a way to be absolutely sure. I'm probably around 1.6 as I train a lot, but I'm certainly not a professional athlete or a physical laborer. So that gives me an AMR of 2,488, which is actually quite average for a male. The average is generally thought to be about 2,500. 
calculate yours, and now you have your AMR. Note that there are other ways you can calculate your calorie expenditure too. One example is simply to wear a good fitness tracker that includes a heart rate monitor. Some good examples include the Fitbit Surge, the Charge HR, the Microsoft Band 2, or the Garmin VO Active HR. If you're watching this a few years in the future, then probably there are better models out there by now. Either way, a fitness tracker works by using an optical sensor on the wrist to measure your heart rate throughout the day. The best models will take regular readings and combine this with information you entered about yourself and movement data picked up from a pedometer, gyroscope and accelerometer. When all this information is collated, you can then be given a rough calorie burn estimate for any given day. The other great thing is that you can sync this with MyFitnessPal, which is a smartphone app and website where you can log everything you eat. This lets you see your total calories in and out and will adjust the number whenever you go on a long walk or do a workout or perhaps have a day where you move very little. And by comparing these two numbers, you can make sure you stay in that surplus. If it's 11pm and you haven't been too active and haven't eaten much, you know you need to get busy and down some bulking powder. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.